Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the adventures of the most diabolical man in the galaxy, and the final chapter of this Sith-tinged walking lawsuit, Galactichad. Previously on this incredible journey, we have scorched across the galaxy taking on some of its most formidable foes. Oh, ooh, that fixed my back. Tested the patience of more than one of the Empire's superiors. The galaxy will bend before you. I can't wait to start killing. The lightsaber you- Wait, what? Dude. And risen along with our master, Darth Barris, to the ranks of the Dark Council itself. Safe to say, if you're new to the series, I highly recommend checking out the previous installments to get caught up in a whole host of dark side shenanigans. But for those already up to date, oh boy, do I have a final act for you. As we once again dive into the wonderful world of Star Wars. A world that will never be the same again. We rejoin Chad engaging in what has become his go-to following a promotion, that being sliding about space station bars looking for a hookup, although this time experiencing an uncomfortable unexpected feeling that he can't quite put his finger on while doing so. So instead resorts to taking to the stage to bust out some moves for his adoring public. That's great, man. Totally not disturbing. Woo! Oh, isn't he great, Marcus? I've seen better. Nani? I can't take you anywhere. On the way back to the ship, our OG companion Vet stops Chad to update him on her family situation we uncovered last time round. What's on your mind, Vet? I've been talking to Tiva. 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 <laughs> anyway, mainly wanted to thank you for Tiva. It's sad that nobody else sees what a good person you are inside. Okay, that's it. The next time I look up the term Stockholm Syndrome, I'll be expecting to see this confusing blue face staring front and center. Back on the starship, the crew gather round to be given their next orders. From none other than our limited edition bowling ball-headed master, Darth Barris. Barris explains that he wishes for Chad and his new additional apprentice, Lord Drag, to return to the planet Quesh to foil a Republic plot looking to take control of the planet's valuable resources. And we are given our contact, Commander Olean who will update us on our next move down on the planet's surface, which we waste no time blasting down to, taking a speed of only fit for the chattiest of Siths. We reach our contact, Commander Ulian, also known as Half Vader, who explains that the rebels have planted explosives in a series of tunnels underneath the Imperial Command Center, that if detonated, will destroy it. We can't exactly allow that to happen, can we? I'd say someone ought to stop them. So Chad, quick as a flash, blasts his way into the tunnel system, cutting down all the Imperial Special Forces foolish enough to stand in his way, leading to the Rebel Commander leading the charge. Has our mysterious problem been solved? Are we active? Sir, best guess is yes. All systems appear to be online. Your detonator should be live. Then let's pack up. We'll blow this cabin on the Imperial Command Center sky high. Only cowards fight from the shadows. Too late. We've been discovered. Stow it. We knew this was a possibility. Sith, I'm prepared to detonate even if it means we all die. You've just wandered into your own funeral. Throwing the switch! What? No, come on, detonate! Detonate! Ugh! Today is not your day. Men, this mission is everything. It will win Quest for the Republic. We will be immortalized as heroes. I order you to hold off the Sith while I reset the detonator. There will be no detonation. Uh, okay, in my humble opinion, this mission is a bust. We. We'd like to just leave now, please? No one leaves alive. Fight for your lives! Not a great start, mate. Tearing apart the task force takes mere moments for our chiseled hero, and despite some last-minute groveling for their lives, cuts off the chain of command to this Republic mission to complete his own, only to receive a call from our master's other apprentice, Lord Drag, clearly for yet another congratulations on a job well done. Well, well, well. Well done. Mission accomplished, eh? You were eavesdropping somehow. As a matter of fact, I was. Captain Trayan was sent here by one of Barris's Republic moles. The explosives he set up were not wired to the captain's detonator. I have the real detonator. An elaborate trap for you. 
I'm going to kill you, Drag. That would be an amazing trick. Our master prides himself on being one step ahead of everyone. That includes you. He knew someday you would rise against him. You were his fiercest. I consider it a privilege that he's allowed me to pull the trigger. He wouldn't dare face me himself. The master never takes out the trash. Barris sends his regards. Goodbye. Interest justified. Shall I revive? Offer no help. We must be sure. His worth will be established by surviving the trek to safety. We will wait at the command center exactly one day for our proof. Well, well, well. The mighty Darth Barris has chosen to stab our hero in the back, rising to his feet once more and setting off to track down those mysterious hooded figures. Chad revels in his excitement on working towards tearing his Lego Terminator-looking former master limb from pasty limb for his betrayal, along with finally getting to try out a bug that he placed to redirect his master's calls after a certain mishap experienced a little while ago and connects us to a secure line through to Darth Barris. Welcome to Dorothy B's Pony Roundup. Today we're looking at my favorite My Little Pony, Fluttershy. Um, sir? Oh, for Christ's sake! I'm even appearing offline! Taking out his former master would be far from easy with him now on the Dark Council. But easy was never really Chad's style anyway. Reaching the nearby camp, we find the two that had been looking over Chad while still knocked out from the blast, luckily interrupting them before they could both finish melting. We are impressed. You are worthy to be the Emperor's wrath. All I want to know is whether you'll help me kill Darth Barris and Lord Drag. Tweedledee and Tweedledarkside are the Emperor's hands named Servant 1 and Servant 2. What happened? Did you run out of name tags? With the Emperor and the one known as the Emperor's voice in the shadows, Darth Barris has falsely claimed the title of the Emperor's voice. An interesting choice, as looking at him he would be much more suited to something such as the Emperor's Arth, and now looks to use that deception to take control of the galaxy. The threat dies when Barris dies. He is too powerful to confront now. Be wary of the ancestral cheesecake. Making our way back to the ship, we dial in to speak with the Hands once more, to get some more details on our next move, including an explanation as to why Hand number two talks like he's punch drunk from Elden Ring. The spider's bouncy balls fall out of the handbag. Uh, yes. I wish Servant Two would keep quiet. Servant Two has been exposed to the Emperor. He now sees the galaxy differently than most. It was Servant Two who realized what was happening on Belsavis. Dropping a like on the video is the act of a true galactic badass. Servant One explains that our next destination of Balsavis, a prison colony planet, has up until recently been unknown to the Empire, and after a data leak it's been revealed houses none other than Darth Barris's sister, Darth Ekkage. And if we know this, then so does Lego Terminator himself, and with her release he would be strengthening his position greatly, something that we cannot allow to happen. And with Barris's agents already on the planet, our first objective will be to convince the Imperials on the planet to reveal them to us, to allow for their swift destruction. Preparing for our journey, scuffed Josh Strife Hayes chimes in with his thoughts. My lord, when Servant One contacted the ship in your absence, I didn't know what to make of it. Brain damage? So it's true. You've been chosen as the Emperor's Wrath. And we now fight against Darth Barris. We climb closer to the Emperor, Master. Closer to ultimate power. I don't know. Those hand weirdos kind of creep me out. Everything has changed, Vet. My old master is my new enemy. Great. I'll update my scorecard. My lord, the ship is ready for departure. Blasting down to the planet's surface, Chad, while wandering through the planet's orbital station, is stopped by a member of the Imperial Guard, who is oddly chosen to dress up as some kind of confusing superhero, most likely named Captain Valentine's Day. Maroon Man informs us that he brings a request from the Emperor. We learn that teams have previously been dispatched to break out a number of high-priority Imperial prisoners, named the Dreadmasters, but the teams working to do so have gone dark. The human tampon asks us to take a shuttle to the planet's surface and meet with his contact to assist in breaking out these powerful Imperials once we arrive. 
taking our first steps on Balsavis, we got a chance to take in the sights of the Imperial Outpost, whilst making a quick stop off to power up Chad's Battlebeard. Checking in with our contact must not stash. We are updated on the situation around the prisoners. Free the Dread Masters and you'll find much to your advantage. Unfortunately, the Republic's moved them to the Deep Prison. Meanwhile, the Warden brought in a hard-headed off-world enforcer, Ellis Ruger. If the Republic isn't stopped, they'll retake this landing zone. Without an exit, our prison break will fail. Who's activating lightsabers on set? Me, I'm sorry. Oh, good for you. Just da 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 da, -da in the background. With the Imperial landing zone contested, we set out to destroy a number of Warden droids to weaken the Republic's presence and spark a prisoner riot for further destruction, with Vet kindly returning from the wormhole that she had apparently recently fallen into. After finding the droids we are looking for, Chad quickly smashes them to pieces, with Vet backing him up with some healing. When Chad suddenly gets that odd feeling he had been experiencing back in the Narshadar Cantina. Did he need to fart? Could it be the edible that Ronan gave him? A curious mystery. Well, if it's anything serious, he thought, at least you would be taking that round sith situation with him. And speaking of the devil, it sounds like Chad has a call to take. Call successfully redirected. Hello, it's Barris Boo. You haven't answered my call since our last date and I've been trying to reach you. I sincerely hope this has nothing to do with my accidental Darth blasting during our cuddle time. And if anything, is your fault for cooking with onions. You're so weird. It's like a space collision. You can't help but watch. Following that disturbing revelation, we check back in with our Imperial contact, who briefs us on our next task of breaking a number of convicts out of their carbonite prisons to lead the other convicts in an all-out battle against their Republic captors. Dismantling those droids wasn't the easiest thing I've ever done. No. No, it wasn't. Before being rudely interrupted. Prisoner, what of your mission into the Carbon Gallery? The Crisis Response Unit ambushed us. I got away. Only me. Excellent. Ruger took the bait. Now you can free the frozen prisoners and wipe out the Crisis Response Unit all at once. Who are these guards, exactly? They train for everything. Hostages, riots, Sith opponents. Tom Murphy! <gasps> Another word, inmate, and I'll throw you back in prison. Ruger's men are dangerous, but don't let it give you pause. Destroy the guards and defrost the prisoners. They'll turn this riot into an organized army. Then we'll have safe passage to extract the Dread Masters. Chad, without hesitation, carves his way into the Carbonite prisons, all the way to the facility's controls, releasing the prisoners from their premium display-themed bindings, which clearly does not go unnoticed, getting a call from the Republic Marshal, Ruger. I hope you're proud. Your time on Bell Sabbath is up. You speak that way to a Sith Lord. I'd speak this way to the Emperor himself if the coward dared show his face. I've been cracking heads twenty years this spring. Every Sith I've down thought the law never applied to him. So let me make this perfectly clear. You've made a mistake. Time to pack up and fly home. You cannot scare me. You'll learn. They all do. After returning to report in, it is agreed that it's high time for this Marshal's career to come to an end. The only thing keeping us from his throat are the force fields guarding his base. Luckily, a mad Deveronian prisoner, Golan, has the key. I can get you your key, and the hand holding it. <laughs> I almost pity the poor Deveronian, but you should know, Golan is not your average prisoner. So with Golan's gonads next on the menu, we beeline straight to his last known location and deliver a beatdown so harrowing that Golan in death morphs into a collector's edition statue of himself to serve as a reward for our bastardry. With the key secured to bring down the Republic facility shield, the stage is set to deliver a killing blow to Marshal Ruger, who despite his previous bravado and confidence is crushed by the steel butt cheeks of our hero. All right, hold your gloating, get it over with. Ask for mercy. I might grant it. I don't think I'd be convincing. Ruger! Come in, Ellis Ruger. This is Warden Grawl. We're taking fire and can't reach your position. What's your status? Roger that. This is Ellis Ruger. Wish I could help, but I'm busy dying for a worthless cause. Over. You're not 
Kruger, what's going on? Wait, I've seen you on our cameras. What do you want? My only desire is to watch your face as I do this. <laughs> Ellis Ruger! Oh, she was the last hope for law and order on Valsavis! I won't forget this! Warden Grawl, out! There's a few things I love about this. The first being the fact that even though we're murdering his superior in the most obnoxious of ways, this guy still remembered to sign off the call properly. Warden Grawl, out! And the second being that Chad's burn of Ruger being so epic that he literally caught on fire for a little bit afterwards. Reporting in with a rather pleased must not stash, Captain Valentine's Day chimes back in, asking us to visit Captain Van Doren, who has been experiencing some issues with some of the released prisoners on the planet. Whizzing on over, he explains that some of the aliens released are going bonkers and attacking everyone, which after a quick brisk walk around the area is quickly snapped out. And after completion, we are informed of a more complicated situation involving the Trandoshan former prisoners inhabiting the planet, who apparently are far more organized than the aliens we just dealt with. But luckily a race that respect battle prowess to such a high degree, that if Chad was to challenge their strongest in battle, we could maybe even recruit them to work for the Empire, acting as a force to keep the other unruly prisoners in line, demolishing the Trandoshan underlings, some just by looking at them, and leaving a trail of destruction. We make it all the way to the Trandoshan leader. The Trandoshan leader agrees, jeering at the idea, but gets a swift reality check when Chad levitates him off the ground and starts wailing on him like a scaly pinata. With the Trandoshan in place and the alien unrest resolved here, we are asked to visit another Imperial outpost on the planet that are reporting to be experiencing issues with particularly fearsome creatures, or trying to clear a path for the rescue of the Dreadmasters. And Chad is asked to make a visit to the underground vaults where these brutes have been discovered, to give them a proper chilling introduction to the dark side. And on the way, Vet clearly also getting a bit of a chill, getting a little too clingy for our mighty Sith Lord. Vet. Vet. Vet, I'm trying to look cool. Vet. Good Lord. Making our way down into the vaults, we come across a pair of Republic soldiers hiding slash tactical cowering from the roaming creatures. Back off, Sith. You don't scare us. Sarge is joking, my lord. We're real scared of you. Please, you gotta save us before those things come back. Creatures that are closing in as we speak ending up looking like a sleep paralysis demon from a person terrified of cows and planes. After a few empty threats to delay the inevitable, Chad cuts down the beasts and turns back to the now terrified Republic soldiers. Didn't think you were that powerful. If I hadn't killed those Eshka, they would have ripped you apart. We owe you, all right. How about we work out a trade? You let us go, we tell you about a certain something. Shut up, Corporal. That's an order. Come on, Sarge. The key to Balsavis's vault is our ticket out of here. Corporal Rand's in shock. There is no key. You're powerless. Surrender the key, or I'll take it. Captain Black has it. Those things took him deeper into this vault. Sergeant, Corporal, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> oh! Wait, please, I'll do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Reporting in, it is revealed that the key that the soldiers spoke of is apparently to be used by these aliens, named the Eshka, to break into the main vault of this planet and break out many more of the kind, to overthrow both the Republic and the Empire, a plan that must be stopped, and it's such a make or break moment that our contact informs us that the Empire will bombard the site to dust from orbit if we fail. Hysterics don't suit you, Colonel. The Eshka aren't that powerful. Those creatures are more dangerous than you realize. Imperial Command agrees. Commander Callum won't chance letting the Eshka escape Bel Savis. He'll bombard the site from orbit if we fail. Battling our way further into the vault, we begin taking apart the Eshka, including the one holding the key, whilst getting a look at some of the Eshka's rather weird-looking combat stylings, flailing around their staff like a nightmare fuel Star Wars kid, as we put a stop to the Eshka's plan to overthrow the Empire. Eshka's prison break is over. Here's their key. Incredible. We must report this at once. Commander Callum, the situation's under control. Thank you for the update, Colonel. I will call off the bombardment. Hmm. 
After reaching one of the members of the Imperial Operation Group, Chad can see that their wounds are carved with fury and could not have been simply made by Republic forces. It seems the Esker are taking one last stab at control of the planet, this time by destroying the very thing we are seeking the Dread Masters themselves. A small army of Eshker infest the Balsavis Lower Tombs, but make short work for our Sith Lord, battling our way deeper until we uncover the leader of their operation, caught in the act of attempting to destroy the Dread Masters. What did he call me? Yes, Madwa. Chad, without a single hitch aside from face planting into a storage tank that was totally on purpose, cuts down the Eshka's leader and releases the powerful Sith Dreadmasters. Control over the dread masters. But she was to rest, she inti. Fear. Yata, Kenneth Rebiat. None can contain us, not this prison, not the Republic, and certainly not these creatures. No, nothing can contain you, except those responsible for imprisoning you from the containers we just rescued you from. With the Dreadmasters secured, we can now turn our attention back to our primary objective here on Balsavis. That of course being tracking down the Imperials tasked with breaking out Darth Barriss' sister, Darth Ekkage. Seek information about a mission to break out Darth Ekkage and her assassins. That's Lord Melikoth's mission. He and his team have been permitted to venture deep within the Balsavis prison. The order came directly from Darth Barris, and you don't have clearance to know more. I do not acknowledge Darth Barris's authority. Uphold his order and die. I will not betray my orders. Colonel, what are you doing? We're in the presence of a Sith Lord. It is our duty to aid in any way. Stand down, Captain O'Clart. I will not, my lord. A wise choice, Captain Bumbleclart. Lord Melikost invaded the prison this morning with a squadron of commandos. He's placed them throughout this level of the prison to cover his descent, and to secure the area for his exit. We don't know exactly where Melikost is headed, my lord, but Lieutenant Cade, the leader of his commandos, might. Trouble is, Cade's men stationed in this sector will report any activity. If you're unwelcome, they'll warn him and Melikost. Everyone under Melikost's command will be destroyed. You've just signed a death warrant for your fellow soldiers. That's treason. I'm reporting you both to High Command. Darth Barris will know what has transpired here. I cannot allow that. Your decisiveness is enviable. I will cover your back, Sith, and Darth Barris will be none the wiser. You have my word. If Cade's commandos don't harm him, you'll surprise him in his bunker. He'll tell you where Lord Melikost is headed. Men, I'm assuming command of operations. First things first, dispose of Colonel Trill. Commander Melikost has been tasked with retrieving Lego Terminator's most likely clapped sister, so naturally Melikost's men meet the chopping block, with Chad sparing none, working his way to the lieutenant overseeing the unit. Your units are gone, lieutenant. What? Why? What's the meaning of this? My men and I are here in support of Lord Melikost. If you're responsible for this, you will answer to him. Tell me where Melikost is, and I'll gladly present myself to him. Damn these Sith games. Lord Melikost proceeded into the high security sector of Belsavis. He's after the records room of the Blown Republic prison there. He seeks the location of a former Dark Council member. That's all I needed to hear. You've fulfilled your usefulness. No! This lieutenant has served his purpose. With Melikost after the data records in the high security area, our next destination is confirmed. Battling our way there, cutting down Melikost's forces right up to the room where the computers containing the records are stored, where we encounter quite the surprise. Hello out there. A word, please. I am Jedi Master Samanit Timms. 
Come out of there, friend, so we can talk properly. Good try, but I sense your nature. I know you are Sith. I even know who you are. Many years past, I was the Padawan of Master Noman Kar. He and I forged a bond through the Force. I know about your confrontation with Master Kar and what you did to him. Ever since you defeated Kar and took Jaysa Wilson, the Jedi Council has been keeping track of you. We know you are no longer aligned with Darth Barriss and are, in fact, here to stop Lord Melikost from freeing Darth Ekkage. Nice to see you Jedi aren't always in the dark. You'll find we are not as inept as your former master may have suggested. It's a dead end, Sith. To follow Lord Melikost, you need information from the computers in this room, but the door has been fused. I came for the same reason. I got the information, but Lord Melikost's commandos trapped me in here. The Jolly Green Jedi and Chad hatch a plan to deal with the door to the server room by disabling the failsafe and literally forcing it open. Well done, Sith. Now, before you think to fight me, I suggest you look at the computers in here. I'd say they've seen better days. Hmm, still smoking. I wonder who could have destroyed them. You destroyed the computers, so I couldn't get the information I need. I did it to make sure no one else sent by Darth Barriss could succeed. That is, after you and I stopped Lord Melikost. A Jedi that is as cunning as he is green, reluctantly agreeing to work together to take down Darth Ekkage. Chad first heads to the location of Ekkage's assassins that have seemingly just been released by Barriss's corrupt Imperial troops. A Sith approaches, I sense hostility. Your rescue has been sniffed out, Imperial. Men, lock and load. We got company. Stay your triggers, Imperial. I want to know what this one intends. My authority comes from the highest station. I am the Emperor's Wrath. There is truth in your words. I can feel it. But I sense hostility toward my mistress, Darth Ekkage. My hostility is about to spread to you. Pledge yourself to me now or die. The Emperor is my supreme master. I bend to you, my lord. My fellow infiltrators and I pledge our support to you and the Emperor. We will slaughter these commandos and then free our remaining brothers. Wear yourself out. Um, excuse me, sorry to interrupt. You're, you're not really going to slaughter us, are you? No, not really. Well, I have to respect the attempt there, mate. Jim's here. Darth Ekkage's assassins have been dealt with. Have you managed to accomplish your part? Well, yes and no. I found a route into the deep prison, but it was a struggle, and unfortunately the way collapsed behind me. Bad luck, that. You'll have to find a different route to this level. What good are you, then? Now, now, don't forget. You need me. Sending the coordinates for our rendezvous. From there, it's quick to Darth Ekkage's cell. Good luck, Sith. I hope you make it. Can't really do this alone. Hello again, dear. Uh... Please do call me back. You you have the most beautiful eyelashes. Uh, if this would convince you, uh, near Darth, wherever you uh, are, <laughs> I believe. Barris. Wait. What? Wait. If that's who I think it is, I'm going to shit myself with rage. With all the pieces finally in place, Chad smells blood in the water, wasting no time cutting down anyone who stands in his way, blasting his way into the chamber containing the sister of Darth Barris. Lord, you are freed. Rage, wrath, vengeance. I've been dormant too long. I need outlets.
Had my brother sent anyone else, I would destroy them for practice. Why did it take Barra so long to discover Belsavis? He must be getting weak. Barras has ascended to the Dark Council, and with your help, will soon be named the Voice of the Emperor. Before you arrived here, I sensed my assassins being freed. And then, someone turned their hearts against me. I don't know what to say, my lord. I've taken every precaution. You've grown incompetent in your old age. I believe I will vent my frustrations after all. <laughs> I will tell your master, my brother, the future voice of the Emperor, that you died like a dog. You are truly Barris' kin, to betray someone so loyal to you. It is a family tradition. Now, exactly who are you? He's with me, Eckage. Nomenkar's sad little whelp. This just gets better and better. If you're aligned with this Jedi, you are a fool and a traitor. I am the Emperor's wrath, unleashed by his hand, and the Emperor has marked you and your brother as enemies. So, the Emperor's hand now works with the Jedi. No wonder my brother defies the Emperor. Varus will be declared the voice of the Emperor, then he and I shall dominate the Empire. I'm not going to miss that. I just destroyed a lord with a mere flick of my wrist. Don't blink. I'm about to do it again. We fight together, sir. As his first act of vengeance, Chad demolishes Darth Ekic. Have my powers waned as I languished here? Mull that over in death. Barris will avenge me. She was defeated. Done. You shouldn't have killed her like that. We could have locked her away again. Oh, sweet pea, you must be very new around here. With only one more task outstanding, our time working alongside a Jedi comes to a swift and violent conclusion. Along with our time on Balsavis, with the death of Darth Ekic completing our objective, as we return to our ship to report in with the hooded hands of the Emperor. The wrath ascends. Darth Ekic will not be joining her brother. Yes, with Barriss's sister silenced, our enemy grows angry. But he has other endeavors that must fail. The key Dark Council member who opposes Barriss's attempt to be named Voice of the Emperor is Darth Vauron. Vauron is spearheading the battle for Corellia, and Barriss secretly undermines his efforts. He hopes to orchestrate Vauron's failure or death. What will Barriss gain if Vauron fails or dies? The weatherman has indigestion. Uh, yes. Auron alone holds the defiant council members together. Barriss's attempts to weaken his Corellia campaign must be thwarted. General Greest commands. He must be convinced to abandon Barriss's orders and take Armageddon Battalion to Corellia. So in an attempt to keep Darth Barriss's opposers on the Dark Council from having an accident, it's back to Hearth to redirect one of the key players of Barriss's opposition, Darth Velron's battalions, back to Corellia, with Chad and Vett once again throwing on their angry dressing gowns to combat the chill of the ice planet. Reaching the planet's Imperial base of operations, we check in with a terrified looking commander and squeeze in for the location of the general responsible for the battalion, before heading up to the surface to track them both down. While wondering just why Vett chooses to adopt such an odd posture from time to time, Chad racking his brain for what might have caused some kind of back injury. Rathari's men look to attack, causing Chad to preemptively strike by firing Vet out of his arse at the flanking soldiers. <coughs> Gliding across the ice in style, it wasn't long before we reached the further Imperial settlements, and with it an audience with the general in charge of Darth Farrell's battalion. Somebody already knocked the pirate presence here down to nearly nil. There's no pressing military need on Hoth anymore. We got geared up for Corellia, where the real fighting is. Instead, we're protecting these caves from Wampus? I understand, Captain, believe me. Try to keep the men in line and battle ready. I have to assume our greater purpose here will be revealed. The order to hole up came from the highest authority. I'm here to rescind that order, General. You must take Armageddon Battalion to Corellia immediately. 
My orders are from Darth Barriss himself. On whose authority are you operating? Darth Barriss won't be in charge for long. When he goes down, those who followed him will be judged accordingly. I don't respond well to threats. Your life can either end right now in this frozen cave, or you can deliver the glory of taking Corellia. Captain. Yes, General. Make ready the men. We're moving out for Corellia. Yes, sir. A surprisingly corpse-free negotiation later, and just like that, the battalion was redirected back to Corellia. After a practically effortless victory, Chad and Vett head back to the ship to plot their next move, when a familiar face reappears. You're looking well for someone I blew up. Your slaves put up a decent fight too. Darth Barris and I will put them to good use. Barris is the true voice of the Emperor, you know. I'm sorry, if we met before, you failed to make an impression. Then let me jog your memory, because I want you to know who it is that kills you. The name will burn in your head. Lord Drag. Darth Barris's one true apprentice. Barris held back when training you, but he taught me everything. And Darth Vengeance showed me dark side secrets even Barris doesn't know. I seem to recall that I saved you from Darth Vengeance and then killed him. Barris told me to hold back, to keep the extent of my power secret from Vengeance and you. Alone, Vengeance would have wiped the floor with you. Well, that's interesting, Drog, because according to my memory, you spent most of that fight flailing around in the background like a useless ballant. That's why I was there in the first place. Agreed. To make sure you stay dead this time. I'm taking your head. My head has a strict no-detachment policy. Humor is often used to mask fear. Time to finish what I started. With a chance to stab back directly at both Barris and his slimy apprentice, Chad wastes no time pulling out one of his most illustrious moves, picking up Drog and power belching on his most likely raisin-sized ball bags before showing him the true power of the dark side. Oh, you think you're doing well. Sorry to burst your bubble, but I have a secret. I can't be killed. Permit me to test that statement. You will learn the hard way. Lord Drag is surely a fool indeed, forgetting who he's dealing with, followed by his claims of immortality, leading to Chad delivering his sickest burn yet. Alright, alright. You must be the luckiest being in the galaxy. But Darth Barris will see that luck run out. If I had a credit for every time someone I'm about to kill predicted my doom, He's burning to death. That's gotta hurt. The more painful his death, the better. Yeah, if you say so. Let's get out of here. I'll revive the others and pack them into the ship. With Barris's pet in flames, we return to the ship to inform the hands of the Emperor of what's just transpired. Servant 2 sensed the presence of Barris's apprentice, Drog. Hidden in life. Announced in death. Cabbages. It seems our enemy knows you live. We have lost the advantage of surprise. Now Drag is dead, Barris's power has taken a hit. What he wields is autonomous. Darth Vauron is receiving his reinforcements on Corellia. This and the loss of Drag will incense Barris. He will tighten his grip. Your disruption of Barris's plans continues. There is crucial need for you now on a planet called Voss. After leaving Darth Cholesterol's apprentice, Char Grilled, we set a course to Voss to move one step closer to taking down the man himself. Years ago, when the Empire became aware of Voss, the Emperor sent the military to lay siege to the planet. The visionaries thwarted what they foresaw to be a simple attempt to conquer. But the Emperor's purpose was to claim a Voss visionary to house the voice of the Emperor. Then this visionary is proof that Darth Barris is not what he claims to be. Norton Furniture is here for you. 
The true voice went on a pilgrimage to discover the nature of a great dark side presence on Voss. He has not been heard from since. The voice is quieted. You must retrace the voice's steps, discover what has befallen him and free him. The Voss are leery of outsiders. Access to the planet is restricted. You need permission from a sanctioned official to shuttle down. We've contacted Darth Saravin, the emissary trying to woo the Voss. He believes you're coming to help. And with that, our next destination is set. The planet Voss. It's absolutely unacceptable. Desperate times call for desperate measures. So I turn to you, Streisberg, to handle this. Galactachad must be permanently silenced, and stories of your destruction echo across the galaxy. Do this for me, and I will provide you with more hair products than you could use in a thousand lifetimes. Find this galactic idiot, and bring back his book of numbers for hookups for me, to prove uh, that he is uh, dealt with. A plan is set in motion to track down the true voice of the Emperor on planet Voss, a location still teetering between Imperial and Republic rule, as we blast down to the planet's orbital station. And whilst wandering to the shuttle down to the surface, we are stopped by a droid. Voss's power struggles are seemingly still well underway, as we are summoned by one Darth Seravin to the planet's embassy as soon as we land. Getting a chance to take in the refreshing change that is the planet's natural landscape, we make our way to the embassy, catching our contact Seravin already engaged. I'm afraid Jedi Master Kelm is mistaken, Emissary Samaro. No such evidence can possibly exist. I am confident that the three will find that an alliance with the Empire can only benefit your people. I await this evidence. Insufferable idiot. Ah, you've arrived. It's about time. No doubt you've heard some of that. I take it you have something for me to do, my lord. Voss must be brought into the Empire. Their obstinance was a problem before the Jedi began meddling. We sense a great power here, strong in the dark side. These people have powers of prophecy we have never seen before. The Empire must have this world and its secrets, and we know from experience that it cannot be taken by force. You're trying to woo the Voss into joining the Empire, then? It is a delicate balance. We fawn over the arrogant Voss publicly and undercut the Republic's negotiations privately. And now this Jedi Master appears and thinks he can sabotage all we've done. It appears that the Empire have been busy grooming Voss's people into joining them. And with this new Jedi appearing in the picture, looks to undo all the progress made. So Darth Serevan asks us to make some of the evidence of the Empire's misconduct disappear before this Jedi arrives. Beginning first by taking out a syndicate hired by the Empire to steal supplies, to then report in at the Imperial Fort for further instructions. A solid plan to strike back at the Republic, but Chad was not prepared for a much more unexpected foe. That being his overwhelming fear of the planetary fast travel systems. But to say the least, I haven't exactly given him the best experiences in the past. Chad stood quaking in his boots at what lay before him, when a nearby droid perked up to offer some words of relief. Sir, our fast travel shuttles are like no other. They include a fully contained habitation area, as well as award-winning safety features, and even seatbelts. Bravely, Chad grabbed his ticket with his sweat-drenched fist and climbed aboard the travel shuttle. Oh, God. Oh, Would you care for some peanuts, sir? Oh, yes, well, that sounds nice. Oh, girls come wild on Tatooine, sir? Oh, right, I don't mind if I do. You know what? With his fears only reinforced and still slightly on fire, our hero tracked down and ended the Syndicate leader before reporting in with General Roche at the fort, where we are directed to the Voss commander and nightmare fueled bicentennial man, Panthen Drow. Drow points us in the direction of a number of beasts harassing the Voss outpost. 
with Chad getting a chance to demolish some Republic spy towers while out and about for his trouble, for a true dose of... If you don't flee, this be like killing two stone with one bird. I'm sorry, what? Reporting back in, we are contacted by Darth Seravin, who looks to set up our next move. I am extremely pleased. The gullible Vos already talk of the heroic outsider who held back the Gorbak abominations. However, we've little time to savor this victory. An opportunity has presented itself. I've had my fill of fighting surveillance equipment, beasts, and thugs. Well, shit, Chad, it's about time. That got old for me a couple of Chad movies back. There is a place the locals call the Nightmare Lands. It is an area steeped in the power of the dark side. A promising Sith named Durek Vesh led a group there to search for the source of the power. But Vesh was weaker than we thought. Dark energy overpowered his mind. He went mad and was captured by the Republic. What good is a madman to the Republic? You're almost certainly trying to pick his addled brains for information about us and the Nightmare Lands. Reports say Vesh is being moved, under guard naturally, but out in the open. We need him dead. A Sith turned bonkers, captured by the Republic, is our next target. To stop the Sith revealing secrets, especially around this mysterious Nightmare Lands, which oddly is Chad's chosen nickname for Christian Mingle. Arriving just up the path from where the convoy is about to make its way, Chad sets up some explosives to take out the lion's share of the Republic soldiers, before hiding in the world's crappiest hiding spot. Only the crazy Sith and Jedi remain, and Chad dives in to cut them down, while Vet decides to ignore the entire affair, preferring to get busy with a spot of rock climbing. Returning to Darth Serevin, he reveals that the Jedi Master they were concerned about, Master Veln, has arrived, and made his way to the ruined city. What is the Empire involved in there? Nothing at all. That is what worries me. The ruins were a city that the Vos abandoned in antiquity. We have archaeologists there, but nothing compromising. Nothing in that city should harm us, and yet that is where Master Kelm has gone to retrieve his evidence. The Jedi Master has chosen an interesting place to gather his evidence of the Empire's skullduggery, but it matters not when his skull will soon be in its rightful place in the grave, there will be duggery for him oh so soon. Chad, dropping panties on his exit, drives to the Vos Catacombs to confront the foolish Jedi Master. You've interfered enough in the Empire's plans, Jedi. This ends now. You must be Darth Serevan's puppet. All the scurrying you've done to cover the Empire's tracks was wasted. The crimes of the Sith are indelible. In ancient times, the Vos and Jedi joined forces against a common enemy, the Sith. Tell me how you know this. The writing on these stone tablets tells the tale. We're still translating it, but enough of the truth has surfaced already. It's over. Return to Darth Serevan. There's nothing you can do now. Your proof won't be as convincing after I reduce it to rubble. Hand the tablets! These ancient tablets cannot be allowed to see the light of day. So after Chad finishes battering the Jedi scum into the ground, he makes sure that the boss working with the Jedi against the Sith will be forgotten forever. Returning to Darth Saravin, he is most pleased with our efforts, and whilst discussing what we uncovered, another nightmare fueled by Centennial Man Voss native shows up to deliver an important message. Emissary, I wasn't expecting you. Do come in. A mystic has had a vision concerning outsiders. One who serves a great power will keep the Gormak from the stars and bring new wisdom to Voss. So the Voss mystics have had visions of Chad being the savior of the planet and saving them from a dark power infecting it. A turn of events that has exploitable written all over it. This is far better than I'd anticipated. The gullible fools follow their mystics without question. Their naivety can be made to serve us. Fulfill this vision and it will surely lead them to ally with the Empire. Apologies. Where should I start, my lord? Make a pilgrimage to the Shrine of Healing. It is a place these idiots revere greatly.
Chad, still holding in laughter, confirms his next objective, of making a pilgrimage to fulfill this Voss vision, and with it secure their alliance with the Empire, with our first stop being Faddish Kai, who we must be granted permission from to reach further into the Voss's shrines, and after smashing some nearby turrets to shreds for him, is glad to give it as we delve deeper into the land's holy sanctuaries, where we are met by the Voss's answer to Fonzie from Happy Days, who warns us that we must partake in a series of trials to prove ourselves worthy to the mystics. The trials claim many. You may not survive. The tougher, the better. The trials will test your resolve. Enter the proving grounds. The trials await. Entering the trials, we are met with a group of mystics slash piss wizards who ask a number of questions to test our hero, with Chad believing he has done well in impressing them. The mystic sees you are blind. Your ignorance is a taint. It will be removed. Well, shit. Resorting to the tried and true method of smashing the crap out of everything, we pass the first trial, with luckily the next few also being most welcome to just blasting through with brute force, finally culminating in a fight against an apparition of a general from the Gormak threat that plagued the Voss in conflict over the planet. And with that, the trials are complete. Arriving back, we are greeted by Magra Sue, who congratulates us on completing the trials, and asks us to focus as we slip into our first vision as a Voss mystic. I will never forgive you for getting me banned from BronyCon. Now I know I will get my chance to face you. The vision is over. You have seen what comes. There must be some way to change it. A mystic is never wrong. A mystic sees. The Voss respond. The trials have ended. Leave now. With the trials complete, the Voss should be beginning their slide into the grip of the Empire. And to seal the deal, Chad looks to deliver a crushing blow to the Gormak presence to further groom the Voss into submission. And a plan is made to strike directly at their leader, Jokal, who they call their king. Taking down a king sounds right up Chad's alley, as he visits a nearby vendor on the way back to pick up some supplies. Please use all products only as intended. Okay, I get the feeling that this man has met Chad before. Smashing down their doors and battering his way into the Gormak's fortifications, this so-called king is easily tracked down. The Dark Heart is an evil place. All who go near it are driven mad. <laughs> no one returns from there. With Jokal speaking of the power that he had received from visiting the Dark Heart, and so many speaking of the power contained within, this surely must be the place to finally secure the Voss people, and with it the planet, as Chad wastes no time making his way there, even despite the locals' warnings that the location could turn him insane, as good lord as that ship sailed already. Delving into the heart, we find an avatar of Sel Makor, and after speaking with him, get a look at the dark power infesting Voss. A dark power that, like so many others, is far from being enough to overcome Chad's might. I am in your debt. Selma Kor still lives, but at last I am free of him. I have been a prisoner in the darkness so long. I must repay you for this. You have questions. My time grows short, but I will give you what answers I can. Don't sound like any Gormak I've met, or Voss for that matter. I learned your tongue from the Jedi, long ago. My name is Nemok Ta, and I once aided the Jedi in their war against the Sith. The creature you faced was an avatar of Selma Kor, and I am one of those who brought his evil upon us all. What is he? Where does he get his power? Start talking, and I'll tell you when to stop. His story begins with the Sith. Long ago, the Sith came to our world. To them, we were beasts, unworthy of notice. But then the Jedi arrived, pursuing them. To the Jedi, we were tools, weapons to turn against the Sith. The Jedi manipulated you into doing their dirty work. There was only one people here, until the Jedi came. Those who studied with them became Voss. Those who did not became Gormak. All the conflict here has been the fault of Jedi interference. No, 
With this shocking revelation, we returned to Darth Serevin, and after a discussion with Voss's high command, finally aligned the Voss with the Empire. After revealing that it was the Jedi after all that were responsible for manipulating their people. With the Empire's grasp on Voss secured, we turn our attention to the most pressing of objectives, to track down the true voice of the Empire. A Voss visionary whose very existence looks to undermine Lego Terminator's false claims, lighting a number of beacons to summon another of the planet's mystics to help pick up the trail of the voice, we are guided back to the Shrine of Healing to speak to Varna Zo to regain access to the Dark Heart via the Blessing of Oneness. Are you Varna Zo? I require the Blessing of Oneness. I heard your purpose, but you are not Voss. The blessing bestows privileges. I hesitate. You cause my insides to scream. You are most definitely not the only one. With our blessing in place, our mystic guide appears once more to direct us to the next stage of reaching the Dark Heart. In order to unlock the gate, you must acquire the Pendant of Bone. If we have to get one more f***ing totem of Anubis or some other bollocks, Chad's going to give him much more than a bone. Seeking out the owner of the bone artifact, Chad has finally had enough with the planet's inhabitants and their endless stream of busy work. I need that talisman around your neck. I need it to gain entrance to the center of the Dark Heart. You're mad. The bone gives me no advantage. To profit from it is good, and I will award it for a price. You killed enemy chieftains. But the Gormak Warmaster lives. Defeat him, the talisman will be yours. I could just take it off your corpse. With Chad making sure there are no survivors, nothing now stands in his way of reaching the Dark Heart's inner chamber to finally track down the true voice of the Emperor. Roth, come to me. I am your Emperor. Darth Barris plays the old games. He maneuvered me here, knowing this body could be bound to this place. The voice speaks of being trapped within the Voss body it inhabits by the malevolent force within the Dark Heart. And after a whole ordeal of a mountain of tasks and getting pissed off at piss wizards, Chad takes out his anger on this mysterious entity, battering it back from whence it came. With freeing the true Emperor's voice achieved, Chad needs a stiff drink after all that nonsense, swinging by the local cantina on the way to the ship. So Tiva landed on her feet. That's weird, I'm pretty sure she landed on her face. She started seeing a moth stationed in the outer rim. He's apparently like 60 years old though. I don't know what to think. I hope he's rich because that's a really disgusting thought. I know, right? At least my Sith Lord is young and handsome. Well, handsome enough anyway. And this is your one chance to take that back before I decapitate you. Feeling slightly refreshed, we return to the ship to check in with Tweedledum and Tweedledarkside, who update us that Darth Velrin, a member of the Dark Council that stands against Barris, and leader of the forces we diverted to Corellia from Hoth earlier, has gained a foothold on Corellia. But Barris is biting back, sending assassins to take out Valron, and thwart our efforts to protect those that stand against his false claim as the Emperor's voice. With Corellia in our sights, scuffed Drostrife Hayes chimes in with some additional concerns. My lord, I'm afraid we cannot go to Corellia at this time. The Empire has enacted a martial law blockade of the entire system. I do not like being told no, Captain. Believe me, I hate saying no, my lord. The Imperial fleet has been equipped with special transponder signal emitters. Any ship without this emitter sticks out like a sore thumb. Hmm. I've never heard about such an initiative. I've been monitoring Barris's communications, Lieutenant. He only implemented the order recently. Probably to keep us away from Corellia. Without a signal emitter with Corellia space clearance, we will be noticed the minute we enter the system. But I believe I have a solution. It shouldn't be too difficult to secure an emitter. As always, you have great clarity of mind, my lord. I intercepted a transmission granting Corellia clearance to a Class A starship not far from here. Lucky us. Quite. We can board the vessel and take their signal emitter. They won't part with it easily. We'll have to go in their guns blazing. A lot of fellow Imperials are going to die. It's for the larger good, Lieutenant. It will be tough going. The crew of this ship is seasoned. 
I know the schematics of Class A starships by heart. I could accompany you on board and lead you directly to the transponder station. Just a suggestion, but it would help expedite things. So a snatch-and-grab mission is swiftly put together to bank us a signal emitter that will gain us access to Corellia. And despite claims of this Imperial starship's crew being a formidable force, they easily bend to Chad's might, ultimately culminating in the most shocking of events. My lord, I could not leave you to this fate without showing the respect of being here to witness it. I regret that I have been disobeying many of your orders of late, my lord. It pains me, but this entire scenario is a ruse. There's no martial law and no special signal emitter. Barris is my true master. He had me lure you here to have you killed. It figures. You can't trust anyone anymore. Since your schism with Barris, I've wrestled with my conscience. And I've watched you destroy countless loyal Imperials while sparing many enemies. I'm convinced you do not have the Empire's best wishes at heart. At least I know Darth Barris is trying to win this war. Wow. Captain Boredom makes a wake-up call. Did not see this coming. Don't worry. He'll realize he's making a big mistake. That ever since my lord removed your shock collar, you have been an insufferable pain. You know what? I say we kill this Imperial punk. Charming to the last. No more time to waste. It's my extreme pleasure to take you out of the equation. Barris and I have been planning this for some time. You'll have to face this fight alone, my lord. I really thought you were smarter than this. I'll show you how smart I am. After all this time observing you in battle, I have exhaustively noted your strengths and weaknesses. These war droids have been programmed specifically to combat you. You always did talk too much. So it's come to this, my lord. Scuffed Josh Strife Hayes has chosen to betray our hero and gets a swift reminder of just what of a tricycle ball bag of a decision he has made. What went wrong? Taking on Galacta Chad. No waistcoat, mate. Never stood a chance. Agreed. It's useless to defy me. I will keep you alive, and we will see if you earn my trust again. This is unexpected. Um, Chad, did you hit your head or something? You have spent this entire time murdering the vast majority of lifeforms you encounter that aren't bringing you a lap dance or a sandwich. But this gut-wrenching betrayal is apparently fine. Um, okay. In a frankly whiplash-inducing change of pace, Chad lets scuffed Jostrife Hayes live. But I can't help but be left feeling, after the wake of destruction our hero has created, that there may be more to this than meets the eye. Back on the ship once more, now barreling towards Corellia, the Emperor's hands confirm the plan to infiltrate the planet and secure Darth Velron's safety, and stuff any plans from Lego Terminator to take him out of the picture. And speaking of the devil... I assume you still recognize me. Consider yourself fortunate that I am reaching out like this. You do know I'm going to kill you, right? I am beyond your reach and therefore beyond concern. I'm here to tell you that you are being deceived. The organization you work for is not the Emperor's Hand. Why don't you enlighten me? All you need to know is that you are the puppet of a sect that the Emperor cast off. They seek his destruction. I am his voice. I don't expect you to trust me, and in the end, you and what you think are inconsequential. So believe what you will. But your handlers have you in over your head, sticking your wet nose in Darth business. Ew. 
A clearly shaken up collector's edition golf ball headed Sith's words fall on deaf ears, as we blast down to the planet's surface to get a first look at the war torn streets of Corellia. Republican Imperial forces litter the streets with gunfire and explosions, with some only feet away. But time is of the essence, as we must intercept the assassins sent by Darth Barris before they're able to reach Darth Velrun. Spotting a suspicious ship docking right then and there, we rush to the landing pad to confront the first of Barris's agents. Identify yourself. Barris sent me to recall you. Your mission has been rescinded. Why did the contractor not contact me himself? Darth Barris's time is much too important to waste on petty communications with a droid. Assimilating. I will contact the contractor and seek confirmation. Go right ahead. I'll wait. Contacting. Ah, I've told you my order a hundred times, and you're not even on your way back. Two number nines, a number nine large, and a- My lord, I am confronted by a Sith who claims you have rescinded my orders, seeking confirmation. I have done no such thing. What Sith are you referring to? Did I make a mistake? You are not amusing. Assassin, destroy this interloper, then proceed with your mission. Chad quick as a flash set to work dismantling the droid assassin, before dashing over to the next landing site, once again just in the nick of time. A welcoming committee. <laughs> Some days you just can't land secretly on a planet, even on a secret landing strip. I am Darth Barriss's apprentice. He has rescinded your orders. Uh, no, you aren't. And no, he hasn't. I know who you are. You're the apprentice Darth Barriss thought he had killed. Marvelous. I've studied you, followed your exploits across the galaxy. You're a personal hero of mine. Didn't know I had admirers. Chad, we have something to talk about later. So sad I have to kill you. I've imagined facing you, and given my knowledge, I have pretty good ideas on taking you down. Well, here, let me show you. This second assassin that seemingly works for a Sith establishment chaired by a person with a speech impediment makes short work once again for our chiseled hero. Demolishing yet another fan of his, Chad heads to the final landing site, only to find nothing, and begins to worry that the final assassin may have escaped his grasp when he gets a call from another servant of the Hand. The member of the Hand explains that Darth Felrun has set up operations on Corellia disguised as a Republic outpost, hiding in plain sight right in the middle of the enemy's territory. A cunning arrangement indeed. Carving a path through waves of legitimate Republic forces, Chad makes his way to Darth Velron's disguised compound, and struts up to the front desk as if he's about to book himself a reservation of pain. A Sith comes in here, he's gonna meet resistance, so, uh, we're gonna have to kill you. Stop pretending. You're getting on my nerves. Really sorry. Just can't do that. Sound the alarm! Admiring Velron's men and their dedication to the ruse, Chad is left with no choice but to deal with them and make his way up to the upper floors, where he finally comes face to face with Darth Velron himself. Stop! Lord Ket, stand down! My lord, retreat into the shadows. We will stop this assassin. There could be ten of you and you would fail. Leave us. I haven't come to kill you. If this is true, the game is renewed. Darth Valron, Barra says you gotta die. Barra strikes! Well noticed, Darth Face decorations. Well noticed. Chad quickly jumps at the chance to cut down yet another of Lego Terminator's lackeys attempting to take out Darth Velrun. That assassin had me dead to rights. You did not hesitate to defend me. My friend, I am convinced. What's more, I believe, with my help, you can defeat Darth Barriss. After sending Valron to the ship for safety, he explains that he's been tracking two agents here on Corellia, working with Darth Barriss. One who is safeguarding secrets used to blackmail the Dark Council, as well as a corrupt Jedi leading assassinations on those that oppose him. And Valron confirms the details of our first target, Colonel Sinks. Storming the Colonel's Imperial compound, taking out all of the blackmail riddled mainframes, we swiftly track down the man himself. Why aren't my escape passages opening? The answer just broke into your command center. 
In the presence of the mighty Galactachad, the Colonel initially resists fearing backlash from Lego Terminator, but after taking in the steel butt cheeks of our hero, sets about raising all the data Barris has been using to blackmail the Dark Council, as we turn over the quivering Colonel to the command of Darth Elrond. Exiting the base, we are told about the second of Barriss's agents, a false Jedi leading attacks against Darth Barriss's detractors, identified by Valron's agent named Shadow, who we are asked to track down for more details on this false Jedi, that upon meeting has clearly spent a little too long on Corellia, along with cosplaying as Captain Suntan, as is rather trigger happy on Chad's arrival. Battling our way into the Jedi bunker, we encounter the gathering we seek. All that remains is to shake out the rat amongst them. Think before you act, Jedi. There's something you need to know. One of you is a Sith spy, leading you into a death trap. I'm here to take him out. What? That's preposterous. Sith are master manipulators. We won't fall for your tricks. Give me one good reason why we should believe you. No, Master Rubatan. We must not fall for Sith tricks. Attack! Since one of these Jedi is the one we seek, why waste time when we can just destroy them all? I should have revealed myself to you. Never imagined you could defeat us all. My fatal mistake. You and Barris rely on tricks and hide behind disguises. It's pathetic. So cold. I die knowing that I serve the voice of the Emperor. With yet another crushing blow delivered to Darth Barris, we inform Shadow that the Jedi Bunker is ready for Imperial takeover. Apologies, my lord. The attack was sudden. Unknown assailant, very powerful. On the run now, taking Volron to a safe house in the Imperial Legislature. He wants you to meet us there. Tell me the attacker has been killed. Way out of our league, my lord. Lucky we got out of there in one piece. Well, 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 Barris seems to have life in him yet. No time is spared heading to the safe house they have taken Velron in light of this new mysterious attacker. With luck, Velron is unhurt, and interestingly has quite the update in regards to our crusade to take out our former master, as we move in to face him directly. Ah, you made it! This is heating up, isn't it? Revealing that Barris pulls a significant amount of his power from an imprisoned ancient Sith spirit. I'm ready to bang down the Dark Council chamber door and face him. All in good time, my friend. We've just reached the best part. He feeds off this spirit's power, stealing all her visions of the future. Everything he has built has come from her insights. If this spirit is to blame for Barris's strength, it must be destroyed. Ah, uh, no, my friend. She is as old as the Force. She is the dark side itself. We must free her, deliver me to her, and we will strike the ultimate blow and cripple Barris from within. Crippling Barris from within sounds like an offer we cannot refuse, as we make our way to the Sanctum, destroying Barris's forces and closing in on the location of the Sith Spirit. There she is, the entity. Such pure dark side energy. Is she not utterly beautiful? I suppose, if you like the smell of rotting death. Come closer. You are here to aid Barris. He desecrated my resting place, where I waited for my love, your Emperor. I am bound. Every extraction pain. If you fail, he will punish me for welcoming you. Don't fear, Entity. The trial is over. I know the incantation. Now it is a simple matter. No, you do not understand. We are not alone. Ah! <laughs> <sighs> Last, I've caught up to you again. I told you, I cannot be killed. Don't you tire of failure, or are you a glutton for punishment? In a wild turn of events, Lord Drag, Barris's apprentice, who he last left doing his best impression of a rotisserie chicken, reappears. But even with all his bionic upgrades in place, still is nowhere near the amount of cop holders required to take down our hero.
With Turbo Tit now out of commission for good, we release the Sith spirit and prepare ourselves for the final battle, with none other than Lego Terminator Darth Barriss himself. It is done. The time to confront Darth Barriss is now. His leverage gone. Vauron preserved. Barriss's bid to be named the voice of the Emperor is crippled. What remains of Darth Barriss is yours, Roth. He has gone to Korriban. Do as you must. Checking in with the Emperor's hands, the stage is set for our revenge as we blast off at light speed towards Korriban, a most fitting location. After all, it is where this epic tale began and where we will soon have our final battle. With such a monumental task ahead of him, Chad checks in with some of his companions, beginning with Jaysa, who amongst all the excitement is getting rather hot under the collar for our walking fridge freezer here. Master, as time passes, the thrill of killing the light side Sith is ebbing. I'm in search of a new thrill. Perhaps one slightly more personal in nature? Master, I want you. Why don't we find someplace quiet? Master. And with that, Chad finally understood what that feeling had been all along. Wow. Okay. All right. More of that later. For now, um, back to business, yes? After such a rare showing of affection, Tad has to do something to balance things out, and what better than to finally crush his former master in a battle to the death. With all the pieces in place, Tad once again struts back into the Sith Academy that not too long ago was his home, all the way to the meeting of the Dark Council, where the final showdown awaits. Had it better be Darth Vauron coming through those doors? Don't act like you were expecting me, Barris. Interesting. This isn't the time for one of your games, Vauron. For the voice of the Emperor, you're uncharacteristically silent. Didn't the Emperor warn you of this? I'm merely amused, young one. My fellows, this is my former apprentice. No doubt you're acquainted with his defiance. He was unworthy of me, so I excised him. The Emperor will inform me what is to be done with Valron. For now, assist me in destroying this rabble. Who dares face the Emperor's wrath? Is that a threat, youngster? Be careful. You might grant Barris his request. No. Barris claims to be the voice. This Lord claims to be the wrath. I will not provoke the Emperor. The one who lives speaks truth. Fine. The Master will grant the slave's last wish. The Emperor calls for your death. Attack me if you dare. I was never, nor shall I ever be, your slave. The battle between the Voice and the Wrath begins, and no amount of head polish or poofy shoulder pads will stop the might of Galactichad. Can you feel your grip on life slipping? Why persist in this futile gesture of vengeance? Let go. Embrace your death. Forget the bravado, Barris. No one's buying it. Just being sporting. I would think you'd appreciate the chance to catch your breath. Your champion is failing, Vauron. And you'll be next. Is that coming from you or from the Emperor, Barris? It's hard to tell the difference. Don't mock me, Fop! Your patron just ensured your suffering will be epic, youngster. Now, die! Finally revealing his of course scuffed Uncle Fester looking face, Barris gets a front row seat at just what an absolute monster he has helped create. We're depleted, Barris. You hover a breath away from destruction. No! My powers abandoned me! Beg me to let you live. You think you can silence the Emperor's true voice? Deliver the death blow then! 
from beyond darkness. I shall strike at you. Someday, vengeance will be mine. I wash the galaxy clean of you. I cannot die. Our hero's rise to the highest ranks of the Empire is complete. With Darth Barriss' defeat, nothing will stop Galactichad in his reign as the most diabolical man in the galaxy. What a stupid idea. I can't believe I'm even doing this. Help spread the word of Galactichad through winning cosplay competitions, he says. Still, getting off lightly when all is said and done it has to be said. Doesn't stop the whole endeavor being utterly ridiculous. Cosplay competitions. What an idiot. The size of that forehead. I should never have crossed the Galactic Chad. No shit.